Sutra of Complete Enlightenment. Chapter 6, Maitreya Bodhisattva. Thereupon, Maitreya Bodhisattva, who was in the assembly, arose from his seat, prostrated himself with his head at the feet of the Buddha, circled him thrice from the right, bowed down upon his knees, brought together his two palms with crossed fingers, and said, O world-honored one of great compassion, you have opened wide the secret store of profound wisdom to enable this assembly to awaken from samsara, to discern between wrong and right, to be capable of bestowing the fearless eye of truth upon all future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination, to give rise to a decisive faith in the great nirvana, and to avoid falling again into samsara, where they are bound to give rise to recurring false thoughts. World-honored one, if the bodhisattvas and future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination desire to sail on the Tathagata's great ocean of nirvana, how should they cut off the basic roots of samsara? How many samsaric natures are there? What are the differences in the cultivation of Buddha Bodhi, and how many expedient methods should they use when returning to samsara to liberate living beings? May you not forsake the great compassion out of which you are saving the world. Pray, teach all practicing bodhisattvas and future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination, so that their wisdom eyes can be cleansed, their mind mirrors will shine, and they will be completely awakened to the Tathagata's unsurpassed omniscience. After saying these words, he again made the same prostration and the same request for a second and third time. The world-honored one said to Maitreya Bodhisattva, Excellent! Excellent! Virtuous man, it is good that for the benefit of bodhisattvas and future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination, you can ask about the Tathagata's profound, secret, and abstruse whole truth, so that these bodhisattvas, wisdom eyes, can become pure, and that all future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination can cut off the basic root of samsara forever can be awakened to reality, and can rest in the patient endurance of the uncreate. Listen attentively to what I now tell you. Maitreya Bodhisattva was filled with joy upon hearing this. He and the assembly kept silent to hear the teaching. The Buddha said, Virtuous man, there is samsara because, since the time without beginning, all living beings have been indulging in all sorts of love or kama and desire. In the samsaric world, all kinds of nature born from womb, from egg, from humidity and by transformation are caused by sexual desire, which alone justifies the life of conscious beings. You should know that love is the basic root of samsara. Because there are all sorts of desire which are an incentive to love, Births and deaths are in unending succession. Desire originates from love, and life originates from desire. A living being who loves his life relies on the basic desire for it. Therefore, the love of desire is cause, and the love of life its effect. The field of desire may be either favorable or adverse. If the situation is adverse, the rise of feelings of dislike and envy will cause all sorts of evil karmic deeds, resulting in rebirth in the worlds of animals, hungry ghosts, and hells. The forsaking of evil and delight in doing good will result in rebirths in the worlds of men and gods or divas. If love is known as objectionable, the subsequent forsaking of love and the delight in so doing will again stimulate basic love and will result in developing good fruit, which is fundamentally samsaric and does not ensure the attainment of sainthood. Therefore, all living beings who want to be liberated from birth and death and to escape from samsara should first cut off their desire and eradicate their love. Virtuous man, a bodhisattva appearing in the world to convert others does not do so by love. His is 
uncaused benevolence and compassion, the object of which is to teach others to forsake love. He enters the realm of birth and death by expediently showing desire for it. In the period of the Dharma's termination, if all living beings can forsake desire and eradicate love, they will be able to put an end to samsara forever. In their keen quest of the Tathagata state of complete enlightenment, they will be awakened to the pure and clean mind. Virtuous man, because of their desires, all living beings fall into ignorance and thus betray five different natures, the shallowness and profundity of which depend on two kinds of hindrance, which are, firstly, the noumenal hindrance, which obstructs their correct views, and secondly, the phenomenal hindrance, causing the continuance of their births and deaths. What are these five natures? Virtuous man, those who cannot eliminate these two hindrances will not attain Buddhahood. If living beings who have forsaken all desires forever eradicate only the phenomenal hindrance without wiping out the noumenal one, they can only attain the realms of Shravakas and Pratyaka Buddhas, but are unable to reach the state of Bodhisattvas. Virtuous Man if future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination wish to sail on the Tathagata's great ocean of complete enlightenment, they should first vow diligently to destroy the two hindrances. After these hindrances have been overcome, they will be able to enter the realm of bodhisattvas. If the noumenal and phenomenal hindrances have been destroyed forever, they will enter into the Tathagata's profound, complete enlightenment, and fully realize Bodhi and the great Nirvana. Virtuous man, complete enlightenment is attainable by all living beings. If they meet an enlightened person and follow his method of practice from the cause ground, their attainment will be either gradual or instantaneous. If they come across the Tathagata's teaching on unsurpassed Bodhi and follow its right way of self-cultivation, they will all realize the Buddha fruit, irrespective of their small or great roots. If in their quest of a learned teacher, living beings meet one who holds heterodox views and has not been awakened to the real, their resultant nature will be that of heretical seed. This is due to the teacher's falsehood and not to their faults. The above are the five different natures of all living beings. Virtuous man, a bodhisattva only uses the expedient of his great compassion to enter the realm of existence for the purpose of opening up the minds of those who are not awakened and of appearing friendly in various forms and in favorable or adverse situations to cooperate with and convert them so that they can all become Buddhas. In so doing, he relies entirely on the power of his pure and clean vow, taken since the time without beginning. If future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination wish to strengthen the power of their developed minds set on complete enlightenment, they should take the Bodhisattva's pure and clean great vow, declaring, May we from now on dwell in the Buddha's complete enlightenment, and may we not, in our search for teachers, meet heretics and men of Hinayana. By strictly adhering to the vow in their self-cultivation, they will be able gradually to wipe out all hindrances. When all obstructions are completely overcome, their vows will be entirely fulfilled. They are thus bound to ascend to the pure and clean Dharma temple of liberation and will experience complete enlightenment in the wonderful region of glory. To repeat his instruction, the world-honored one read the following Gatha. Maitreya, you should know that all living beings are not liberated because of their desires, which cause both birth and death. If like, dislike, stupidity, greed, and hate are all uprooted, no matter how their natures differ, they will all attain to Buddhahood. When the two hindrances are killed for good, 
the quest of right teachers to awakening, leads by keeping to a bodhisattva's vow and abiding in the last nirvana. All bodhisattvas everywhere rely on the vow of their compassion to appear in realms of birth and death. Those now practicing self-cultivation and living in the Dharma ending age should strive with vigilance to cut off love. Then they will realize complete enlightenment. <laughs>